Well, actually, I was at a diesel convention in San Diego earlier this year. Because the diesel people know that light-duty diesel hybrids are on the way. They're already in Europe. They're already in Australia. But I had this little epiphany as I was three days in San Diego with all these diesel people that we already went through this with light-duty diesel 20, 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. Where this new technology comes in, it could be in every repair shop. But what happened? What happened was the smart guys, the guys who knew diesels and liked them, probably Ford Techs and GM Techs, started their own independent diesel repair shop. So you can go to any city in America, and there will be an independent diesel repair shop with four or five guys working full-time, 40 hours a week, when the market share in that town is under 4%. Mm. This is exactly what's happened with hybrids. It didn't hit me until the summer when I realized there's the parallel. Not every shop has gotten into it. In fact, most shops have stayed away. I think, finally, the automotive repair shops, the independent repair shops, are starting to see that there are many hybrids out there with a lot of miles on them that need service. Mm -hmm. And I do think that is, you know, causing them to think about, hey, I need some training. I mean, this is the future, especially, I think, what many technicians don't realize with the new federal standard coming out of 50 some odd, 52 or plus miles a gallon. Right. How are we going to achieve that? The easiest way is with the hybrid right now. But the fact of the matter is, in order for the car manufacturers to reach the rather aggressive uh, fuel economy standards that are being right. they are going to have to incorporate some sort of, of hybrid powertrain system into their sure. fuel. And most sure. The car owners are almost kind of like the, the sports car enthusiasts where they actually like their cars. They're not necessarily something that they just have because they need it. It's something that they have and they bought because they really were interested in the technology and they like the vehicles. Yeah. I believe that every shop really needs to add hybrid service, you know, and not just the oil changes, not just the brake jobs, but really understand the whole car. And that's just it. It's a growing market. So even though you might not have a large volume of them now to support, you know, a significant investment of time and money, at least getting your feet wet with it so that you can start to get to be known as the person that services hybrid. So as that market continues to grow, you automatically have a leg up on the competition to draw in new customers. Right. right. And if you're the trusted repair facility that's offering these types of services to your audience, and you're going to want to make sure that you can accommodate all the different types of vehicles that they have in the family, assuming, of course, you're able to, to uh, gear up to work on them. Uh, for example, how deep a dive a shop might want to take into getting the kind of equipment and training they need really depends on what the market is in your area for these hybrid vehicles. If you only see one or two a month, then you really need to make a hard decision as to exactly how much you can afford to invest in order to be able to get a return on that investment. And if you don't position yourself soon in the hybrid market, somebody else will, guaranteed. So if there's nobody in your neighborhood working on hybrid cars, now it's a perfect time to get involved. That if you can only service part of the vehicle, if your shop is considered a full service shop, but on certain vehicles you can only do some things on them, eventually those customers are going to probably find a place that can do everything. And it's not that it's a bad way to get started, but it's something that should be a, a entry level point for a shop that's going to continue to grow their their service end of it. Unless, of course, it's a, a quick lube or a, a quick repair facility where they don't do a lot of the uh, the heavy work, if you will, you know, the diagnostics. There's a lot of shops out there, obviously, that make a good living, and they mainly focus on under car and, you know, things like that where they don't get into the, the drivability diagnostics. And for those guys, they can still do most all of the work with a, a basic understanding and some basic safety training on these vehicles. And then if they are a full service shop that wants to get into drivability diagnostics, they're going to have to understand a lot more, obviously, because of how these systems really tie in together. Right. You can have one that appears to be a different problem, whether, you know, an internal combustion engine problem's mocking itself as uh, it's showing up to appear like a hybrid drive system problem or vice versa, so they need to be more familiar if you're going to get into the diagnostic end. But from a basic maintenance end, the shops really just need some, some basic safety training and a, a good familiarization of the vehicle operation and components. You know, it's like if you want to do diesels, right? That's a, that's a perfect example. Mm -hmm. Either you're going to afford, you're going to fix a Ford Power Stroke, or you're not. Right. Either you're going to get the training, the tools, the equipment, and dig into that vehicle and know it really, really well. So when it shows up, you know how to fix it. Not just change the oil and send it to the dealership because you don't know what you're doing. People don't want that. They sure. want the neighborhood garage to be their friend. 
Right. I ran a shop for 25 years. Shop mm -hmm. owners today are very smart, and they need to make sure there's a return on their investment. Sure. I can lay out the financial figures all day long. They show you you're crazy not to be in this marketplace. Mm -hmm. Even if you're in Duluth, Minnesota. Well, good information sources, all data, uh, factory stuff, go to the NASTF site. You talked about uh, first responders. A lot of the OEs have uh, information right there for them as far as safety-wise, how to shut their vehicle down. I seen this myself at a repair shop locally here. Guy was doing an oil change on a Prius. It had the uh, key keyless entry. The consumer was sitting down in the office. The guy puts the car up in the air, not realizing it wasn't off. Right. He drops the oil. All of a sudden, the engine starts. Brings it down. You know, he panics. The oil drain gets crushed all over the nightmare. Right, oh, right. Nightmare. So as I'm doing that webcast, no lie, there was about three, four people that said, wow, same thing happened to me. Yeah. You know, yeah. so it, it does happen out there, and as well as i seen it in a fleet account where someone wasn't paying attention. Even though they went through training, they did not turn off the smart key. They put it up. It was silent. Right. They put it up in the air, and guess what? As soon as the high-voltage battery dips down, it's going to want to start the gas engine up to recharge that battery. If they're going to get into the, the troubleshooting and the, the high-end repairs or the high-end diagnostics of the actual electrical system, they need to make sure that, number one, they have a good foundation in basic electrical because that, that's key to all of the, the operation of the hybrid vehicle is going to be related to basic electrical principles. It's obviously the application of that varies from one vehicle to the next, but it's all basic electrical. Now, the one thing that does throw kind of a, a wrench into it for the, uh, the technicians is we start dealing with AC electricity, which is something that we haven't really dealt with in the automotive world other right. than, you know, some wheel speed sensors and, and things like that. So it's there are some differences in that. They need to get familiar with AC uh, voltage and, and current. They also need to start to get involved with the uh, the motor operation, the differences between a, a permanent magnet versus an AC induction, what type of failure modes the, the motors can have, how they can be tested, whether you're talking about a, a gross failure analysis only or if you want to be able to do something for intermittent level problems or even you know the the unable to duplicate concern type problems that we we see in internal combustion engines where it might only misfire under certain conditions when it's moist and it's under heavy load we're right. used to having to deal with that and we've come up with methods in the industry to, to be able to diagnose those using current ramping and oscilloscopes and things like that where we can start to look for the early stage failures the hybrid systems as a whole following the OEM service procedures generally don't do anything for those early stage failures they're patterned around a gross failure analysis and looking at how to find these early stage failures is going to be key if you want to get into the advanced level diagnostics. Mm -hmm. Now I know that we've just teamed up with a company called Electude, E-L-E-C-T-U-D-E. -E -E. Electude is a company based in Holland and starting January 1st we're going to be able to offer shop owners the ability to get what equals a four-year college degree in automotive science and technology on their iPad. Wow. You won't get a certificate. You're not going to get a college degree, but you'll get that training right. through ACDC using the Electude training platform. And this is, has nothing to do with hybrids. This is all 12-volt conventional based. Mm -hmm. as, as I bring more students into the hybrid world, I and they realize their electrical training is not up to speed. It's sure. not enough for them to really grasp a Nissan LEAF that doesn't have an internal combustion engine. So all that training goes out the window. Right. Now you're looking at inverters and DC, DC inverters, electric motors and such. So we're excited to bring a new bit of training to AC, DC customers that have technicians that didn't finish high school or didn't finish college or never went to college. But they can get the training that they need now through this Electude AC, DC partnership. Almost every tool you need, you already own. Seriously, into Honda, Toyota, and Ford. The four big, the three big ones. Mm -hmm. To get involved with that, factory scan tools, all the training, the tools, the equipment to do virtually everything is well under twenty thousand, and you can start with ten thousand dollars and be pretty good shape to get in there. But you need to want to do this.
The biggest thing when you get into the, the service on these things is going to be making sure you know how to shut them down safely and having the proper safety equipment. So a pair of class zero gloves that are current dated, so six months or less since they've been certified last, a, a good category three digital volt ohm meter so they can verify the power's actually shut down and has bled off of the high voltage system. And then good service information. I mean, service information is, is king in this world. You know, we have to have access to the good information on how to shut the vehicle down, what components are located where, what fluids are okay to use in the different things on the vehicle, whether it's, you know, the different refrigerant oils or the specific transmission fluids across the board. If they have that stuff, they can really get their feet wet on these things without getting into the obviously the hybrid diagnostics end of it. They can still do all the maintenance with those sure. those basic tools, and even you know some larger component replacements. As long as they know how to shut the system down, they could still say replace an engine on one of these that has a hybrid electric transmission on it. They just have to know how to shut the high voltage system down to make it safe to to take that engine out because they will have to disconnect some of the high voltage cables and things like that. But they definitely need some training with uh, high voltage that they're dealing with. They're going to need special equipment. Every shop owner, uh, owner needs a rescue or safety hook, a rescue pole, you mm -hmm. know, that at least for liability purposes. And all their people in the shop that are trained on hybrids should have gloves, 1,000 volt uh, gloves, as well as covers for those gloves. Right. lots of training out there and the quality of that training varies widely. There are yes. some very good individual independent trainers out there doing uh, very good basic training in hybrid. There's also more advanced training available. Uh, usually it's much more expensive but, but the, in either case you want to do your homework and to do some research. Ask around, talk to other uh, shop owners who may have been to this training and get an opinion as to what the value of it was. The basic safety stuff really doesn't take that long to go through. You know, maybe a day's worth of training, so like an eight-hour class, you could go through the safety stuff to to know how to shut down the vehicle, understand the the interlocks and those kind of things, and how to actually shut the system down and verify that it's been shut down using the right procedures. Right. Obviously, all of that information's in in available in book format. It's available from the the manufacturers. The big thing that we found is the technicians want to have somebody there to help them with it so that they get comfortable with it. So the hands-on really becomes kind of a, a key portion of this with the, the service community as a whole, obviously, likes to do things with their hands. Um, I could say the past two to three years, a big increase in people that really want hybrid training. Not just a seminar. You know, they really want the hands-on, right. uh, how to do it. Um, in fact, I just got more batteries in to rebuild. I re rebuild a lot of battery packs. And uh, I'm running low on all those old Honda batteries. So the training, I think, is ex exceptionally good on hybrid vehicles. Fuel cells are on the horizon, so you know, take a look at that at some point. But if you're if you're doing well, and you don't want to work on these. Just consider the fact that someone else is going to take over your shop. Well, the new ASC uh, hybrid certification is going to be an advanced level test. We're calling it the L3. So it'll be. Um, one of the uh, one of the advanced level tests that requires three years worth of experience to qualify for the certification. It's actually been under development for a number of years. What's been holding us up is the critical mass of having enough hybrids in the market so that enough technicians were seeing these to make the certification worthwhile and probably more critically for the training to be available for the individuals to uh, to get the, the kind of, of uh, in-depth information and, and uh, training they're going to need to be able to pass an, an advanced level diagnostic test for hybrids. Recently, all, all of these things came together, and ASE was able to finally convene some workshops to work out exactly how we're going to do this. Those uh, technicians out there who may be familiar with our advanced level tests know that we use what we euphemistically call a CAMEL, you know, a horse designed by committee, which is a uh, uh, basically sort of a common automobile type that we use for the test. The hybrid test will be a little bit different. We're going to be using four distinctly different types of, of system descriptions, and you'll be doing your diagnostics based on which system you're working on. It's due to launch in January of 2015, so we'll be finishing our development this year.